A couple of weeks ago I put out a video deconstructing the Starfield simulation of the homebrew Galencia and Jay Aldred commented on the video and issued a challenge to me to maybe throw in or modify the code to throw in some characters and have them scrolling down the screen. I thought about it and I've decided to put this video out. Instead of having the characters scrolling down the screen, I thought it would be better to have the characters scrolling from right to left with a message. And in order to do that, I've decided to use a redefined character set just like Jay used in his Starfield simulation and use a rotate operation for ROL to rotate left and have the see if I can make the characters smoothly scroll doing that and that's what this video is covering. Now I know there's a ton of other ways of creating a smooth scrolling message going across the screen but I thought this would be a fun project to tackle and also I think it's going to be easier to position that message whether you want it at the top or the bottom or in the middle or wherever you want it on the screen. So that's why I decided to program the scrolling message in this manner. So I wrote a quick little sample program to try to teach myself more about how this command work, the rotate left command works. And what I did is I have six bytes down here under sample and they're all displayed in binary. So the first position here is in binary second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. So you have six of them. And what I'm doing is I'm rotating them left, starting with the sixth most byte. Then I'm rotating the, the fifth, one, fourth, all the way down. So how the ROL command works, it rotates in the carry, and then it rotates out the leftmost bit. And when it's done, the eighth bit, it puts that back into the carry. So it rotates in what was in the carry flag, and then it rotates out a new position or new carry flag. So if we clear the carry and we do the ROL, this this bit that gets shifted in will be a zero. If we set the carry with an SEC command, then this left the rightmost bit here would be a one that gets shifted in. And what I did is I comment I put a little comment here that shows after you do the shift what the bit positions would be. So you do the first ROL, and when you do the first ROL, you shift in a zero, so you add an extra zero. So instead of zero one, now it's zero zero one. And then this one gets shifted out, but it gets placed into the carry. So now when you're starting the second ROL, the carry flag is already set. And when you do the ROL, the, the rightmost bit is set to a one and then you just repeat this process for all the bytes and what that ends up doing is it shifts this whole thing it does like a logical shift and shifts all the bits over one bit and so that's the concept that I'm trying to use for this video in order to shift or do a smooth scrolling message going across the screen from the right to left and that's by using ROL and shifting the, the bits so let's get started in looking at the code this code up here simply tells the program to, to begin code execution right here at the beginning. Um, so when you hit F5 to run, it will automatically run and start, start at this first, this first position here at 810. And I've broken the program into various steps. Step one being to redefine the character set. And I have, I've copied that from this website, the dust layer and it works pretty good and it redefines the character set putting it at memory address 3000. Step two, in order to scroll a line you have to have you have to redefine some characters and looking at the character editor I decided to redefine the character starting at position 64 so starting from here I went from there and then went down 40 so there's 40 characters on the screen. There's 40 characters going across the screen on the Commodore 64. So I'm going to redefine 40 different characters and then place them in a line going across the screen. Let me show you what the program does. And then I'll explain how it does what it's doing. 
So you can see I have a smooth scrolling message going across the screen. And that was the ultimate goal. So this is the spoiler here. <laughs> and now I'm going to show how I kind of went about doing this. So when we get to, when you first start the program, this part right here, if I comment this out, then you'll see a bunch of un, um, you'll see instead of a blank space at the beginning, you'll see a bunch of characters there. See how they're scrolling off. So all I was doing is erasing that content right there. So you don't see that at the beginning. So this is just a quick loop starting at 3200. I know th this, these values are hard coded and I'll come back to that. We'll um, try to eliminate these hard coded values. But that's where that is 64 times 8. So we were in, in the character editor down to index 64. Each character has eight bytes. Each line here going across is one byte. So that's byte one, byte two, byte three, byte four, all the way down to byte eight. So when you do 64 times eight, your first character that I was going to redefine starts at 3200 in hex. So I just zero it out. And since I was doing 40, time, 40 characters across, 40 times eight, it's a little more, I think it's 320, so it's a little more than 255. I actually had to do two loops. So one loop for the first 255, and then another loop to get the remaining characters blanked out. Step three is to place the characters. It says in the bottom row here, but at first I had it in the bottom row. But just to put the characters on the screen. Since I'm starting with an index at 64, I'm doing a loop 40 times, and then I'm incrementing the X register, and then storing that character on the screen. We can adjust which line, which line on the screen, which position. So if we wanted to, we can make this 428 and have it go down one line. So step three puts the redefined characters on a row on the screen, puts them all across all 40 characters. Step four is the main program loop. In this loop, we grab a character from our message string, check if it's zero. The end of the message string has a zero because we use the command null. We put the next character into its proper position and then shift the characters. I, I wrote a quick program to shift the characters and then we just jump in a loop until it's done shifting. So I have a, a routine here. You pass it the letter like if you if you have the first letter in your message is an H for hello. This program this this program right here finds where that H is in the character set, copies all eight bytes, and then puts them it puts them into the index position on the screen at position the 40th character in. On, on the right side of the screen so that it'll, sc it'll scroll that rightmost character into place. And so that's what this is doing. It's kind of <laughs> hard to explain that uh, on a video, but that's what that is trying to do. Then I have my shift routine. The, this particular routine, it wasn't implemented the way I wanted to uh, have it done. The idea that I, what I talked about was to rotate left, load a character, rotate left, store that character, and preserve the carry. The problem is the comparison statement clears the carry. And so when I was doing this in a loop, it wasn't working properly. So what I had to do on, in this version of the program was I had to figure out what the carry was for the, for the next or for the previous character in line and then I had to either set the carry which is what I'm doing here I'm doing a comparison set the carry or clear the carry and it's kinda of sloppy I, didn't, I wasn't really satisfied with this so I have rewritten this subroutine in, and I called it and I copied the whole program and put it in left shift 2 
and I'll look at that in a few minutes. And then I have a smooth scroll routine, which with, if you don't do this, I'll show you what happens if we don't do that smooth scroll. So as it's shifting, it does a smooth scroll. If we comment that out, it's going to scroll faster and a little jaggedy. You'll see. So see how it's a little bit, it's not too bad, but it's just not smooth. That might, might be hard to see on the screen. So if you put it back in, you run it. Nice and smooth. Now the other problem I had is, with this program was I used a couple of different methods of setting up the smooth scroll. I used this method which I got from Jay and this works sometimes but depending upon on, my, on this program, depending upon where you which uh, row on the screen you put the message, it, it doesn't work properly. I wasn't really sure how to modify this to make it work so I've, I decided to use this one, this, this method and if you just mess with the comparison statement you can get a smooth scrolling message every every time. The problem I think that I was having why I had to play around with this is I think this is taking too many instructions. Um, it's taking too long in some cases where the you, you run into a problem. So let's try, oh, let me show you a problem that you would run into. If you move this down to the bottom, let's say, and then run it. See how there's a little degradation right there? And that you can eliminate that by one of the ways you can eliminate that is by messing with this value here and you can get it to work. But um, that's not the focus of this program and I just wanted to point that out. Now moving on to my, my uh, left shift two program in this one, the idea was I want to use, I want to go back to how I did this program, how it just has all the ROLs in a row and not have to worry about setting the carry or clearing the carry uh, within a loop. And so that's when I came up with this program. And so I did a little macro that does 40 rotate lefts for each byte on the screen starting from the rightmost the farthest one away the top character so I had to do it in increments of eight so let me come here, let me see if I can't let's go into the character editor say you have three or say you have 40 of these in a row and I go to the farthest farthest rightmost character and I rotate only this top byte I ROL the top byte and then I go to the previous character rotate that top byte and then the previous and rotate that pro that's what this is doing. Now the only problem with this, you have to do this for all eight bytes going down. So that's why I made this a macro. And then I just did it for byte eight, byte seven, byte six, five, four, three, two, one. These eight shift the whole line, the whole row, the whole row going across, all 40 characters, it shifts it one bit. Then if you call it eight times, it shifts it a whole byte. Then you can grab your next character, put it in place, and then repeat the process. So that's what I do in this program. And it's laid out the same, the same way. You have your character set on, on the step one. Step two, erase the redefined characters in place on the screen so we don't see it. So we don't see them scrolling. And then in step three, we display the redefined characters. Step four, we st this is basically the main program right here, the main program loop. So you get your character from the message, call the program to put the character in place, shift all the characters, and then just do it in a loop until you're done. And then this is a program return. And then the message is uh, at the bottom of the program you put whatever you want in the message and it basically runs the same way let me run it it 
it runs faster it runs smoother and I don't have to worry about what position I put we can put this anywhere on the screen without having to worry too much about the smooth scroll program so to me it runs better it, it's less finicky than the other the other program and uh, I did run into a few little glitches or th things so like you saw I have some commented code right here this was weird to me I had these backwards at first when I first did it so if I bring them in and then comment out the, the original watch what happens it looks really weird it looks like it's shifting right instead of shifting left but it's weird characters I was like, whoa, that's weird. So I'm going to undo that. So remember, you can just put in any message you want. After this finishes scrolling, I'm going to hit run again. And watch it flash. Did you see it flash the characters there? I noticed that that's a, a minor issue where it doesn't clear the, the screen. So either you clear the row that it's on, you clear that line, or you just clear the entire screen. So I, in order to fix that, if we just do a command up here, FFD2, this is like hitting the shift clear screen. And that'll clear the screen and you won't see it flash anymore. So this will clear the screen, so you won't see that flash. Well, let's see, I'll hit run again, and just clears the screen so you don't see any anything. And then let's take this smooth scroll out just to see what it looks like in this version of the program, if we don't do any smooth scrolling program. goes a lot faster. It looks pretty smooth at that speed. So then let's put a delay in. I have a, a delay program instead of a smooth scroll. And you can see it's a little jaggedy. It's, it's It scrolls fairly smoothly, but you can play with that speed of that delay. Just lower this value. And to me, it's not as smooth, so I, I, I just put threw it in there to see what it would look like. It's smoother than it would have been the other way. The other neat thing you can do pretty easily would be to split your messages into two lines. And we can do that here. by simply modifying this piece of code right here. Copy part of the code and just do two loops. Have the first 20, let's say, be on one line and then the next, the, the remainder of the, the characters be on a different line and we could pick any line we wanted like maybe maybe at the very top of the screen or, or the one line down from the top of the screen and watch what happens when we do that. Oh, uh, loop, loop one, two. So you have, if you did it right, you could have actually two messages going across at the same exact time. I mean, so that that's just to kind of a, give you a taste of what that would look like. But um, I don't plan on doing that. I thought that was cool. I wanted to eliminate the hard-coded values as much as you can in your program because it's kind of a, a poor programming practice to have all these hard-coded values. So what I wanted to do is create another uh, constant and I want it to be kind of short. 
like CS and make it equal to 3000, which is the, the, the character set beginning uh, of where you, the re redefined characters are. And then just kind of do like this, CS plus 200. Sure it still works. <laughs> I got my message. I forgot to put the 40 back in. Let's do that again. Boom, okay. Okay. And then just follow it down the line. So we have CS is at 3000. I want to load the high byte of CS. Let's run that. Make sure that still works. This is kind of a way you can optimize your program. And then like wherever you see these types 3200, you could just say CS plus 2000 or 200. And then ultimately down at the bottom of the program, you would want all of these to be redefined. I'll do a few of them. CS plus two. And you get the idea. And then if it goes to 33, you just do a plus 3. And uh, the only reason why I was using these, the char high and the char low, was to increment this 8 bytes, every 8 bytes, so I didn't have to do a multiplication. And it makes the program code execute quicker. I'm going to change this back to let's put it to the top of the screen. I wanted to thank everyone for watching and I had a fun fun time writing this program and I will be posting this code on my GitHub. I want to thank Jay Aldred for the idea and the push and this was a fun project. Thanks for watching.